Welcome to Scoop World Order. It is Monday. It is game week. We are about to have the foot hit the ball on Saturday. People have been dying for this Saturday to come. 3.30 CBS, about a 31-point favorite uh, playing at Bloomington. The Indiana Hoosiers are on deck. Uh, I think it's going to be an absolute beatdown no matter who plays quarterback. Uh, I think it's just we have too much talent, too much skill. Um, but we're going to get into that, and we're also going to get into the latest on some five stars. Guys like Brandon Baker, uh, there's a defensive tackle, Dominic McKinley, who's coming up for a commitment. Uh, are we in on it? Is there any other crazy guys that could potentially make official to the store Ohio State? We're going to get into that with Bill the Bank Green. But first, as always, we're very thankful and grateful for you guys, I guess, for showing up every single night. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like, click subscribe, and also click that little alert bell. Shout out where you guys are watching from. As always, I love when you guys do that. And in the comments, I want to hear which of the remaining recruits who are uncommitted, or maybe someone who's committed that we could flip, would you most want to join this class? Uh, this is realistic. Let's be a little realistic here. Uh, but I'd love to see some names. Put those in the comments down below. Uh, and we appreciate you. So that being said, I'm going to bring in my man who is the golfing machine, Bill the Bank Green. Bank, how are you today? Doing good, man. Real good. All right. So, uh, our favorite topic in the entire universe is offensive line recruiting. We talk about it, I think, every single day on our site. Uh, Brandon Baker, Jordan Seaton, Gerby Lambert, I don't think we have any shot at it. I think he's going to go to Notre Dame or Harvard or somewhere, wherever. Um, where are we at with Brandon Baker? Where are we at with Jordan Seaton? Um, are you optimistic? Do you feel good about those guys? Uh, and honestly, what does Justin Fry have to do to pull a five-star tackle uh, that everyone seems to be obsessed with? Thank you there. Yeah, with right. Jordan Seaton, I think there's a – yeah, you don't hear me? No, you're good. You're perfect. Go ahead and roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, with Jordan C Seaton, I think they um, – I think there's a pulse there, but, you know, not much more than that. I don't think they're getting Jordan Seaton. With Brandon Baker, I do think they're getting Brandon Baker. Um, Texas has now thrown their hat in the ring, and you know Texas NIL is powerful. Um, I liked it better when it was Ohio State versus Oregon. I like that matchup better. Now that Texas has jumped in there, not quite as optimistic, but still, I still think Ohio State is going to get him. It makes a lot of sense. Justin Fry's had that relationship for for a while now with uh, with Baker, and um, I think it makes a lot of sense. There's openings at Ohio State for sure for him to get early playing time, and um, they've been recruiting him for a while. They've been on him hard, and they you know Texas is new. Ohio State's been there the whole time, so I think they're going to get him. So I would say Jordan Seaton's long shot. Brandon Baker, uh, I think they're the favorite to get him. I think they're going to get him. Do you think that he is a guy that can start early as a freshman? Again, you know, Luke Montgomery is a guy that I think has made major headway. As me and you watched him at camp a few years ago, I yeah. thought he was a tackle all day. Is he the kind of guy? Yeah. I mean, I, I think Brandon physically is more imposing than Luke. I think Luke is a, is a, a fantastic athlete for his size. Is he the kind of guy that can play early, play as a freshman potentially? Um at a position where we need, we need an injection of talent. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I do think Brandon Baker can play early. I don't know if he starts and he's the guy you're leaning on, but I think he would be on the same trajectory as Luke Montgomery, where he's in the mix to play. And, if, you know, he backs up and gets a lot of PT and then takes over, you know, as a sophomore, I think that probably makes more sense, but I think he would blow by, most of the tackles that are on that roster now, Fitzpatrick, Zen, those guys better get a lot better because Brandon Baker's really good. I think he's the best old lineman in the country. So those guys better get better. You know, Luke is probably primed to start next year. Um, Simmons, you know, be back. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but, yeah, Brandon Baker would be a guy that would definitely get on the field early. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that uh, even if he's not a starter, I think you got to rotate him in there because Simmons will be gone after a year. Yeah. And I think it's just it's better to have guys that have their sea legs a little bit. And they've played a little bit. And they've got some experience playing uh, in games that are still competitive and not just at the end of the game when you can put the tuba player out there at tackle. Like, 
you know, let, let those guys in. I've been very critical of Ryan Day for not pulling the starters and getting the linemen in earlier because I think that sure. it hurts it hurts your depth because when these guys are bright eyed and bushy tailed and they got to go play a real opening opponent, it's it's tough sometimes. You know, I think that well, you got to get those good. Yeah, if you look at you know who's the starting center against Indiana, who's starting, who's trotting out there? Carson Hensman, zero zero Carson groups, Hensman. yeah, zero plays ever at center in his life. You thought a year ago that he even had a remote chance at being your starter. Why would you not have played him in the first four games or any time last year? You get four games and still, you know, redshirt. He didn't play yeah. one play. So obviously that tells me they didn't really think much of him last year. Now maybe he's gotten a heck of a lot better, but I mean, it's inconceivable to me that he couldn't have got on the field last year and gotten some time, especially if you thought he was going to be your starting center this year. Did they think Whipler was going to leave? They probably had to think it was 50-50. So I'd rather see Carson Hensman with 40 plays under his belt than zero trotting out there this week. I mean, it was, you know, almost a wasted year for him last year. He could have got game action. I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, again, I, I knew Luke Whippler was out in the, by the middle of the season. So if I knew, you know, just because I had a good source, then I would hope to God Justin Fry would know. And I'd hope to God Ryan Day would know. Or at least right. know, hey, there's a lot of smoke around this kid. And I think that he's mature. And it looks like he wants to make the jump. And because, again, there's some times where this stuff just happens in packs. And, you know, Paris Johnson was a third-year junior. And Luke Whippler was a third-year sophomore, redshirt sophomore. But sometimes these guys get the itis, and that you know their buddies are leaving. And you know, like if you were playing bank at Ohio State, and your two best friends were leaving to go to the league, and you were on the on the cusp of it, might dive right in with them. And guess what? Sure. Luke just made Luke just made the Browns. He's going to make eight hundred thousand dollars this year, literally playing for the Browns. So people say, oh well, he made a bad decision, and his signing bonus is probably you know, 400 grand. So he's going to make over a million dollars this year as a 20, 20 year old. So, you know, people that they, you know, they turn yeah. their nose up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and again, he'll hit free agency earlier. He'll be a free agent in three years. So yeah. if he, if he starts rotating in and, and starts at center, he might hit a big payday when he's 23 years old. So 23, 24 years old. So, yeah. you know, he might get a third cut. Yeah. So again, it, it's not always some binary, you know, Hey, I, I got to stay for five years. Cause the thing I know about football is there's no guarantees and guys get hurt. Guys yeah. get you know, Tyrone Prothro broke his leg and he would have been probably a first or second round pick uh, at Bama. He was like the original Jerry Judy and, and he broke his leg in half. He can't even walk anymore. So, you know, you can go get that money, man. Go get it. Um, yeah, in terms of in terms of defensive ends. Obviously, you know, we, we, we missed on our uh, our boy Dylan Stewart, um, who's the superstar. Um, is that dead in your mind? Do you think that they've got the claws into him deep in South Carolina, the NIL deal, whatever it was that, you know, cause again, that was, that was weird to me. Cause like when we're competing with South Carolina, that's like one of those ones where something, something's up, you know, if, if it's, yeah. and we're, we're as Bama, Georgia, Clemson, Florida state, right. I get that. But man, when it's Ohio right. State versus Carolina for the best defensive end of the country raises an eyebrow. Uh, is that one dead for us? Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, he just committed like a few hours ago. It's not like, you know, he hadn't been committed that long. So I would think it's dead today. Yeah. You know, do you revisit it? Of course. I mean, you're going to stay on that kid. You'll keep calling him, texting him until he tells you to stop. So it, it's not dead on Ohio State's end. I promise you that. I mean, mm -hmm. they only have, they don't have a lot of D linemen committed right now. You got to find him. You know, they're, they're chasing the Dominic McKinley kid. I mean, I think they have a puncher's chance there, but I think Texas is probably going to be the call there right now. I think it's Texas, you know. And the funny thing with Dominic McKinley is it doesn't seem LSU's in this one at all. And that's crazy for me to think that LSU does not, does not even have a horse in the race here. But, you know, NIL, man, they can they, they could get back in that class real quick. I'm going to toss the Dominic He's McKinley film up. Oh, God. We, we watched this film uh, probably a month or two ago um, when he was on the radar heavy. You know, he took an official to Ohio State. And he, I mean, here he is getting a pick. I mean, look at him run. You know, I mean, that, that, I mean that's 
freakish for as big as this kid is. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm shocked because yeah. Louisiana, I mean, LSU, the Tigers, they own Louisiana. Like, I mean, we don't even send coaches to Louisiana. I think the first guy we sure. recruited in forever was Tackett Curtis last year, and we whiffed on him, and somehow he, somehow he went to SC. But, I mean, I remember, like, when I played LSU in 07, their whole front was from Louisiana. I mean, they, didn't, they don't have to go nowhere to find big, monstrous Glenn Dorsey, Tyson Jackson. You know, the, the list goes yeah. on and on. Um, Brockers, these guys that have been first-round picks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so you think we got a puncher's chance at this kid? Again, you know, the NIL thing is scary. I you know, like, like, I like what? Yeah, he's a freaky athlete. But Texas, I mean, Texas getting in, I mean, yeah, it was going to. No, he's going to get paid. You know, but when you eliminate LSU, and it seems like LSU is not even in this thing, if you take them out of the equation, then it's a free-for-all then. But, you know, I, I think Texas is, is in the right spot right now, and it's going to be hard to beat them in, in NIL money. They're going to be very hard to beat. Um, yeah. So, and why would LSU not be his favorite team? Something's wrong there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it just seems crazy that LSU wouldn't be the outstanding favorite, but it doesn't seem like they're even in this one, which is crazy to me. So we'll see. I mean, Ohio State, if you could get this kid and pair him up with Justin Scott, you know, and Edric Houston, I mean, that'd be one of the greatest D-line classes ever. And then oh, that, they, can, that... they can take whoever they want as the fourth guy. You take whoever you want then. Who do you see as the fourth guy? Do you see Brandon Caesar, the kid from Cleveland Heights? Do you see Booker Pickett? Um, there's a lot of guys out there that are kind of yeah. playing plan B-ish type guys. Um, right. Who, well, who Booker are you? Pickett would, be a, Pickett would be playing A. I just don't – I think FSU's – you know, there might have been a couple checks already cashed in that one. So that NIL <laughs> might be done. Um you know, I, I kept throwing Brian Robinson's name out there for a year now. But I'm finally ready to ready to give up on that one. But, you know, um, he was in the mix for sure. He's a, he, he's talented as heck. So, but yeah. we'll see. You know what I mean? Pickett doesn't seem to be – Pickett doesn't seem to be in any hurry to make a decision. So, no. he would be a guy – I think they would take him today, they'd take McKinley today, and then call it a day. So yeah. the nice thing is they got two five stars in the hopper. That's a great place to start. I um, yeah, I agree. It's it's been an interesting run for for Brian Robinson. I that's I always root for like a kid who's seems like he's a hard worker. You know, little wild story going with Fitch. He's down here in Columbus now, Westerville North. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just something doesn't seem right because again, a kid that doesn't have an offer, right. he refuses to work out at camp. Like you know, you got to know you got to know your situation. Like when you're like a guy like me or a guy like Terry McLaurin or a guy like Darren Lee, if they ask you to work out five times to get an offer, you have to go work out five times. Like Joey Bosa doesn't yeah. have to do that. Terrell Pryor doesn't have to do that. Dylan Riola doesn't right. have to do that. But like guys that are fringe guys, if they tell you to jump through a hoop, you say how many hoops, how high, where, when, what time, how early there's no, Hey, maybe next time I'll work out. Hey, I'm going to leave my spikes in the car and, maybe just, you know, peacock around yeah. at the thing. Cause, cause again, that, if there's one thing that coaches hate, it's guys that show up to camp and they don't work out unless they're that dude, unless they're that five-star. I mean, Dennis Finley, I'll never forget him from cast tech was a kid that we liked. His film was okay. Um, but I wasn't sold on him cause I thought he was a low motor kid and he literally showed up to camp and didn't bring spikes. And that was the cast tech day when, when, you know, I, I took those guys out on the golf cart and, uh, and, and literally, you know, the, the coach Jermaine was the best. He's like, that was the greatest tour I've ever yeah. had in my life. It was amazing. And like Dennis Finley, I was like, are you going to, you know, Hey, we're going to do our drills now. Are you going to work out? And, oh, I didn't bring any spikes. I just got sandals on. And I'm like, like, you're not that you're not Larry me tonsil, dude. You got to go get your spikes on and let's, let's go to right. work now. You know? So again, some of these kids, they just don't have self-awareness. Um, which is sad because it costs them an opportunity to potentially, you know, play for yeah. a top a top five school. You know, I mean, it's it's easy to get that Michigan State offer. It's hard to get Ohio State, Georgia, Bama. You know, those, that's a different that's saying that's saying at the Cosmopolitan. That ain't the Motel Six. You know, so um, yeah. 
Well, well Brian, I think his, his – I was at camp when Brian Robinson was there. I talked to Brian. I talked to his dad, and I think it was dad kind of overrating – where his son actually is and we all love our kids i mean that's who we are as dads but yet you have to be realistic too and you know the dad was kind of telling me you know like well he's got this offer he's got this he's number five in the country he's i said do you have an offer yet here no do you want to offer here yes well you better run to the car and get your spikes uh. you know what i mean let's go I don't care if you're the number one D end and you do not have an offer here. So you're not the number one guy to them. You know what I mean? So I think Brian got, you know, I think his dad was kind of naive to the recruiting process and looking more at rankings and offers he had and thinking that Ohio state would go by that. Well, they ain't going by that. No, they're going to go by what you show them. And he it yeah. didn't work out, you know. So they didn't care that he was a four star. They didn't care about he's ranked ahead of this guy, behind this guy, or we got seventeen offers already. So they don't care. You yeah. don't no. have an offer here, so you have to do some things. You have to work out. Might have to come back and work out next week. But they, mm-hmm. I, I just think that dad was naive to the process, and yeah. I think it probably cost because Brian's good. Brian can play. Mm-hmm. Well, and, 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 and my counter to that is, and again, I'm the only guy on the beat other than Zach Smith who sat in the recruiting meetings with Urban Meyer and Mark Pantone and Sam Drayton, Mike Vrabel, Fickle, and, and how they grade stuff is the tape, get them to can't, you know, there's some guys that they're, they're, they're called one plus one or one minus so one plus is Joey Bosa offer him full steam ahead. Go get him yeah. right now. A one is like. Brian, you give him the soft offer, maybe get him to camp, evaluate him. And a one minus is he can't play. That's the rating system. So like, he's clearly a one who thinks he's a one plus. And dude, like if you're that good, come kill these tackles, come kill them in the, in the long passage, come kill them. Go light up the Armstrong brothers, go light up Mark Nave, go light up whoever they put in front of you. Cause again, you know, me and you stood there and if we can watch Shamar Stewart work out and he was so good that they had to, he they they had, hard too. They, they had to pull him out of the drills because they were scared he's going to sure. kill somebody. He was that good. So yeah, be I mean, be that he wasn't guy. Just working out. Yeah, you know, oh, it wasn't just God. a soft workout for him. No. He was there like it was a Super Bowl. Oh God! I mean, he was I, there, I, and he had an offer. He didn't need to prove anything. No. But oh my God! I mean, he was there like his life depended on. It. That was yeah. one of the best workouts I've ever seen. I've been to high state camp for over twenty years. It's one yeah. of the best workouts I've ever seen. Yeah. So that's the difference. That's the difference there. There's a Shamar Stewart way of doing things, and then there was the Brian Robinson way of doing things that, you know, yeah. didn't work out for him. Yeah. And, and, and again, this isn't, this is just, you know, again, we're not, this isn't denigrating, you know, Brian. I hope he has a great career oh, no. and he does great things. I, I mean, again, I root for Ohio kids wholeheartedly, but, you know, it, again, it's just, you know, some of these kids, man, I'm like, when you come to that camp and you got to earn an offer like Terry McLaurin did, like Darren Lee did, like I did, like Brian Hartline did, you know, you got to come to the camp two, three times and, and work and you got to go out there and just murder everybody in your path to get that offer. Like, Hey, that's, that's what it, that's, it is. What it is. And honestly, you know why you have to do that? It's because your tape's not good enough. If your tape's amazing, right. then they'll that's give you that. It, yeah, exactly. And that's my, tape my tape. Isn't good enough. Yeah, and, and and honestly, my tape in high school was crap as a junior. So it's like you know, guess what? I had to go kill everybody at camp and murder them and go take that offer. And again, that's that's fine. Again, but you know, when you sit and evaluate these guys, you know, like again, the people that think that the the, the big sites, the two four sevens on threes rivals, like those are just kind of like a starting point. And then sure. you have the Mark Pantoni, Urban Meyer, Ryan Day position coach ratings like they have a whole big board in their main staff room and those are the real ratings it's not what what what's what simmons or those guys say because again you know i was in there when we had Derek green was the unanimous number one running back in the country five star all world from from uh virginia and we sat and watched him and you know he's a good player yeah. he's a one he's a one plus but we watched ezekiel elliott and ezekiel was playing against 
you know, it was like Division Seven Missouri ball, but he ran for 280 yards every game, five touchdowns, murdered people. And then we watched Derek Green's film, and Derek Green looked physically imposing, but he didn't dominate terrible competition in Virginia. I mean, he'd have 20 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. And I'm like, and so yeah. that was a big thing that Mark Pantone said that was one of the smartest things ever is that he doesn't dominate against bad competition. He doesn't dominate in ba- against bad ball. Like, I mean, you know, and Ezekiel, you know, if you're Ezekiel and you're at a little Christian school in Missouri, you know, he, he dominated. You can't always, uh, you know, if your parents send you to a D7 Christian school or whatever, you, you know, you can not control who they put in front of you, but you better dominate them if you're not playing against St. Ed's and St. Thomas Aquinas and Bosco and all these powerhouses. So, you know, again, I, I think that I hope that if anyone listens to this and they have a young kid who's come up in the ranks to do the recruiting, you know, you are what your offers say you are. It's not what rivals or two, four, seven round three. And those guys do a great job, but I'm just telling you, like, their ratings are just the start. They're the small little starting point. That's like an anecdotal. Hey, we better watch film on these guys that they deemed five stars. You know, I mean, I mean, you sat in those meetings back. I mean, you know, I, I did, I did the Ohio rankings for 15 years and I told people the same thing that you said, you know, I just give out compliments, you know, Mark, Mark Pantone gives out scholarships. You know, I just give out. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Nothing. You know, what I give is nothing. What they give will set you up for life. So impressing yeah. me is not like impressing Urban Meyer. You yeah. know what I mean? Or you know, your old line coach, whether yeah. it's Warner, whoever, Stud, Fry. That's if you're an O lineman, that's the dude you have to impress. Not me. Uh, Doesn't matter oh, what yeah. I say about you to them. Yeah. So, and, and, and honestly, like, you know, for you. You only can do so much at an eval. You can go watch them at a scrimmage, go watch them at a camp, go watch them at a game, but you're not actually working with the kid. Like I worked with like Pat Offline. And Pat Offline was like one of the most prideful kids, a tough kid, just got put on IR this year. You know, he's going to make $3 million to not play football, you know, and he's in on your, like you're nine in the league. And, you know, that was a kid that he wasn't rated very high. But if you, if you go back and look at what he did, you know, two-time All-American, won the Remington Award, um, drafted in, like, the second round. He's been in the league for, like, nine years now. So, I mean, or seven or eight years, whatever it is. It's like, you know, that was a guy that we liked a lot better than the evaluators did, you know, because, again, we get to dig a lot deeper than evaluators do because we're literally coaching the kid and we're putting him on the board and we're seeing, you know, how's his cognitive side? How What's his high school coach say about him? You know, and it's, you know, and, you know, you get in deep with these high school coaches, they'll tell you the the truth. Like, hey, are we, you know, are we missing on this kid? You know, I mean, there's there's some kids, um, God, who was the the quarterback uh, that went to Notre Dame? Um, he's a little kid. We didn't take him. And, and you know, their high, and the high school coach literally said, you know, you're not missing anything. Malik Zaire. You know, I mean, he literally said, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he yeah. literally, he literally said to one of our coaches that, you know, he's a good kid. He does well, but is he that? top drawer guy that's gonna win you a national title probably not and, and guess what happened and, and malik was a really nice kid obviously a local yeah. kid but yeah you know did you know, how did his college career pan out because that's what you're projecting is it's not what they did in high school it's how good can they translate into the college and then potentially into the nfl um because there is projecting involved like a lot of these kids they're not finished products especially when they're not receivers, quarterbacks, because you know the seven on seven game has made receivers and quarterbacks so much further advanced than they were twenty years ago, fifteen years ago. No um, that's why that's why Carnell Tate can no show doubt. up and be our third best wide receiver the second he gets here. You know, and and these yeah. quarterbacks, T.J. Stroud can come in as a freshman and be competitive. You know, Quinn Ewers can come in as a a, a reclassified kid and and be uh, right. you know, uh, just light up our defense on scout Almost team and that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as a true yeah. freshman, basically as a true freshman age kid, he almost beat Bam. I mean, if he doesn't get his sternum broken half, he probably does. So, you know, again, like the, you know, these guys are they're advanced um, with the passing schemes, and plus the passing game is so overpowered because of how they call illegal contact and uh, defensive pass interference. So, I mean, if you can throw it and catch it, man, you're gonna shred teams. Um, any, uh, I asked Nevada this earlier. What are your biggest concerns going into week one? I know that you haven't done your deep dive yet. You, you always put that on BuckeyeScoop.com. Yeah. Uh, what are a couple of things you're worried about? We talked about the special teams, the O-line, the quarterbacks. Uh, what are you yeah. worried about? 
Well, you mean this week or this season? Well, well, well. Let's we'll start with uh, this season and then going into Indiana. Yeah. Well, this season, you know, everything you hear about the quarterbacks is is pretty positive, but we haven't seen any of them take a meaningful snap yet that means anything. We saw Kyle mm-hmm. McCord against Akron. Devin Brown have done anything. Um, so I don't know. And quarterbacks, the most important position in all team sports. So, and I don't know if they're good. They might be really good. Um, they're going to be good against Indiana and Western Kentucky and YSU. They're going to be good there. Are they good against Notre Dame? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Notre Dame's going to score on Ohio state. I believe, I think that Notre Dame offense with Sam Hartman is a different animal than what they were with Pine or Buckner or any of those other, the last four or five quarterbacks they had. So you better be able to score. So quarterback, I think is a question mark until we see him. Um, Should they be good? Yeah, they should be playing in Ryan Day's system and McCord was highly rated, Devin Brown highly rated. We just haven't seen it yet. Bigger, biggest concern for me is the Mm -hmm. O-line. I know Matt Jones and Donovan Jackson are dudes. I mean, there ain't no Mm -hmm. doubt about it. Those guys are NFL guys. Center, you got Carson Hensman. I've never seen him snap ball yet. Neither of you. Neither is Ryan Day. Just in practice. Mm -hmm. Tackles. You know, I mean, man, those are huge. You know, Josh Fryer's a a nice player. I've always looked at Josh as a sixth man, seventh man O-line. Well, he got to be a starter this year. So that's a big jump going from, you know, being the extra dude to being the dude. That's a big move. So he's got to be good. Then you got, you know, Jimmy Josh Simmons on the other side. And we had talked about this. He had 17 penalties last year at San Diego State. He wasn't blocking Georgia. He wasn't blocking Bama. He wasn't blocking the Big Ten. 17 penalties. So I went and looked it up. How many penalties last year did DeWan, Paris, Whipler, Donovan, and Matthew have for the year? How many did they have? Do you know? 20, maybe? 17. 17. They had 17 (laughs) totals a group. Jimmy Josh had 17 last year blocking nobody. So that's a concern to me. That's a horrific number, 17 penalties. How many did you have in your Ohio State career? Oh, God, five, maybe. You know, I I mean, mean, 17 in one year. He won't get to have 17 penalties this year in Ohio State. Oh, He gets up around that 8-9 mark, he's he's out. So that's a concern when you look at that O-line. Defense, I think the defense is going to be good. There's no reason why they aren't good. They got a lot of guys back. You added Igman Oson. You know, you, you added a kid from Syracuse with, you know, Eichenberg, Steele, Jack Sawyer, JTT. Get Tyler Williams on the field and let him play. Michael Please. Hall. You know, um, Burks should be better this year. Ransom better be better this year. Or Ransom's going to take a seat if he's not better. Um, Styles has got to blow this year. He's got to blow up. Yeah. So Hancock is a guy. I've always been a Hancock guy, and I'm not giving up yet. But man, I'm close because he's just—he's <laughs> never really good. You know, he should be good, but he's not good. Uh. You know, same with like I look at Julian Fleming that way. Like I never quit on Julian Fleming because he's got so much freaking talent, and that's mm-hmm. what Hancock is. Hancock should be a number one corner. He shouldn't be the number, whatever he was last year. He won one or two. You know, yeah. he played behind Cam Brown. Whew. Cam Brown wasn't very good. No. So Hancock's huge this year for Ohio State, I think. And I think yeah. if Hancock can play, I know Igman Oson can play. I know Burke can play. That gives you three corners out there that can cover. And yeah. I don't care if Jim Knowles can call one of them a safety if he wants, but those three guys can cover. So I think Hancock's the key in that DB room. I think the D line is solid. I think the linebackers are solid. Those DBs have to be better than what they were collectively last year. So DB is a big concern of mine. O line's the biggest concern of mine. And then quarterback. So, are, and everything are, I talk about is always in relation to winning the national title, yep. not winning a big, t- although you got to win the Big Ten East. <laughs> you know, you got to get this Michigan thing figured out. You got to win the Big Ten East. You got to win the Big Ten. Then you go to the playoffs and you see where you're at. I I totally agree. Are, are you 
Are you worried about us, our lack of pressure? Because that's a big thing. I know you love sure. to talk about Get sure. over, fi- over 50 sacks is a big metric. They didn't come close last year. They didn't yeah. come close to 50. You know what yeah. I mean? The leading sack guy was, was it JTT with four and a half? Four and a half sacks? I think you that know, was Nick Sawyer. Boso, I, I, Nick, I, I, Boso I, get, Nick Boso get five with a broken leg. I mean. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, you got to have more pressure. I mean, everything has to be better on that defense. And I think it will be. It should be. Those guys are good. I mean, they weren't good, but they should be good. Put it that way. You know what I mean? Jack yeah. Sawyer should be better than what he was. JTT, take the Penn State game away. He has to be better than what he showed. Ty Leak's got to get in shape. Mike Hall has to stay healthy. But those guys are all really talented dudes. And But, you know, saying, hey, we're really talented. Well, why'd you give up? Why are you giving up over 40 to Michigan and over 40 to Georgia then? You know what I mean? That just can't happen. So, am I worried about Indiana? No, they're going to beat Indiana badly. Mm-hmm. You know, you got two quarterbacks that are going to be looking to put points on the board. So, I think Ohio State scores a lot, and I think Indiana scores nothing. I think Indiana sticks. Uh, Tom Allen is going to get fired. It's a question of when. Mm-hmm. He's got that contract that, you know, they probably don't want to pay the buyout. But yeah. – that staff knows they're dead men walking at some point. Those players know that the coaches are going to get fired. So I think Ohio State just annihilates <clears throat> Indiana this week. And then, you know, like I say, Notre Dame's the first hurdle. Wisconsin is going to be a hurdle. Penn State's a hurdle. Michigan's a hurdle. You got four losable games this year where a lot of teams, Georgia, I don't think they have any. Their schedule is so cake. Oh, my God. But this is really a tough Ohio State schedule that – Mm-hmm. Toughest. This is the toughest schedule at Ohio State I've seen in, I don't know. I don't know how far we'd have to go back. This is a really hard schedule. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you have to go to Camp Randall and to Ann Arbor, and then you throw Notre Dame as well. I mean, those are three real road games. Like, I mean, and, and plus, oh, yeah. the the thing is, we only have six home games. Last year we had Crazy, eight home games. Yeah. And again, so you had to rob Peter to pay Paul because last year was the year to win the title. Cause we had eight home games, four road games. And that's, that's unbelievable. And you had Michigan at home after they, you know, they beat you down. Um, so we couldn't get that one done. And so though this year you got to have the six home, the six home games. And I mean that people that don't play football, they don't realize like how big of an advantage is to have eight home games because you don't have to travel. And it's like, you know, your, yeah. your body, your body feels better. You get more sleep. You, you know, you recover more. Again, like that's, you know, plus like it's hard to win on the road in college football. So when you have Real eight hard. of them, at, yeah, I mean, you know, you, especially at Camp Randall with Thick. I mean, Fickle's yeah. going to have those guys going, running through walls to beat us. Well, you plus know. the week before they go to Wisconsin, they play Penn State at home. Yeah. And let's say you beat Penn State. Huge win. Beat Penn State, ranked number one in the country, whatever. Everybody telling you how great you are. Then you go up there and play Fickle's group. What do you think Fickle would give to win that game? He'd cut oh. body parts off. He'd, oh, cut, he'd cut two fingers off to win that game. He's so, right. you know, and he's got a quarterback in Tanner Mordecai. They're going to score. It's not typical Wisconsin yeah. that looks to beat you 17-15. It's not going to be that way with Fick up there. So, yeah. I mean, if Ryan Day can get through this schedule 11-1 and or 12-0, and I think it'd be a, a really, really good coaching job. Yeah. And this year he's got a coach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah. in the past, I think he could cruise his way to 10 wins. Oh, you know, easily. you, you ain't cruising this year, man. You got to yeah. coach this year. You've got to really coach your butt off with these road games, you know, four losable games. You got to get the Michigan thing straightened around, or you're going to, if they lose to Michigan this year, you're going to start hearing a name we haven't heard in a while, John Cooper. Because yeah. they're going to start – that's that's what the narrative is going to be. So yeah. this is a huge year for Ryan Day. And I think if he cranks out an 11-1 or a 12-0, you know, wins the Big Ten, goes to the playoffs, that's a heck of a year with this crew. He, oh, doesn't, yeah. have the team. he doesn't have the team this year he had last year. There no. are a lot of guys a lot of guys from last year's team. You know where they're playing? They're playing on Sundays. A lot oh, of Sunday God. players left, yeah. walked out the door. Yeah. I, I mean, like last year, like I said, last year was your, you had eight, you had the highest drafted quarterback 
that we've ever had in CJ. You're tied Art Slasher two overall. He's going to start for the Texans. Paris yep. is going to start for the Cardinals. Dewan it was fantastic in the preseason. Luke Whipler, again, that O line last year was as good of a oh. pass blocking O line as we've ever had. I mean, you have Paris yeah. and Dewan at tackle. Those guys are absolute erasers on the edge. So, you, I mean, you're losing dudes. You know, Jackson Smith and Jigba obviously had a lost season, didn't play. Um, first rounder, but I mean, you still had Marvin and Emeka, so I mean, you still have two other first rounders. So, you know, yeah. I, I, again, like you know, you say you don't have to coach, yeah, like when you've got Stroud and Marvin and Paris and Dewan, and you can call it 70 passes and not give up any sacks because you're so good at pass blocking, like, yeah, and you're at home. So, I mean, you got eight eight games where right. you have no no right. noise on offense. So, I mean, you can operate smooth and you know, but again, like you said, I, I think this is a this is a year where, you know, some of these coaches really got to earn their money. Cause I'm telling you, like they got like this year, Justin Fry, who I love and I've known for a long time the, the, you, you ain't, you ain't got Paris and Dewan no more. You got, you got to coach up these tackles. I mean, Jimmy Josh yeah. Simmons has never played left tackle in a real game before. He was a right tackle. San Diego. He's a right tackle in, in high school, you know? So I mean, 17, you got to 17 penalties. Oh, I mean, and, 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 and you know, in the, little kids, in the little kids league, 17 penalties. Yeah, and, 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 and I, I, I mean, can you imagine our fan base if he has seventeen penalties in a season? Like, well, I mean, he won't this... get seventeen. He won't get seventeen. <laughs> no. He'll get benched. He'll get benched at eight, nine, ten. So he ain't gonna get to seventeen. But yeah. I mean, that's that's concerning. Yeah, it's really concerning. You yeah, know? I mean, we, maybe we... he'll be great. Maybe he'll be great. But like you said, mm-hmm. Justin Fry, I thought did a great job last year. But he no. was handed. He was PJ. handed some diamonds, man. No, he oh, didn't God. screw it up. He yeah. didn't screw it up. Yeah. But he but he was handed some prime beef. Per- well, this yeah. year he's got to make he's got to make them. He's got to take them and make them better. Last year he just had to not screw up. Yeah. He doesn't have that this year. He's got to coach his tail off this year. Yeah. Last year he had a, a bunch of filet mignons at STK, and then this year he's got a hamburger helper. And he's got to serve it at STK. <laughs> you know? Nobody got hurt last year. You know yes. what I mean? Mm-hmm. He didn't have Paris blow a knee out week two, Whipler go down week five, Donovan Jackson go out week eight. There are schools that have that. Ohio State has had years where the injury bug hits the O line. And then, man, you got a problem at that point. Oh, yeah. That didn't happen last year. He had five NFL guys that stayed healthy all year. Yeah. He ain't got that this year, man. He's got to coach his tail off this year. I think they all do. Like you said, you know, um, this is really a coaching year for Ohio State. They don't have what they've had in the past where you have maybe two losable games, but you're even more talented than those two teams. S- superior experience, everything. They don't have that this year. Talent, yeah. yes. You need a lot of inexperience. Yeah. I mean, in a real rough schedule. I don't think people realize this is a nasty schedule. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. And honestly, it reminds me of the 14th season. I know I'm not saying it's going to be a national title, but it's like, you got a lot of inexperience on the O line. That was when we were starting Daryl Baldwin and Billy Price as yeah. a freshman, and you got Jacoby Boren, and you got you know Taylor Decker was about the only thing we had locked in, and that's kind of what Donovan Jackson is. And then you got JT because Braxton Miller blew his shoulder out throwing the ball, so you're starting JT, and we you know we got there and played Navy and stink it up and give up. That was a tough game for Ohio State. We I we gave. I think Ezekiel Elliott had 12 carries for 44 yards in that game. Yeah, exactly. And then the next week you come home, so we'll get healthy, you know, against Virginia Tech. Uh, No. And at that point, I mean, you thought it's going to be a six and six season. Oh, God. They they just never lost again. No, it was was the greatest, greatest, I mean, it could have been the greatest coaching job in Ohio State history. It was like, I mean, amazing coaching job. You go from stinking it up against Virginia Tech, and I was at that game, and I was like, "That was I was like, thank God I'm not going to be in that staff meeting on Sunday because Urban is going to blow the top off yeah. this place, and it is going to be yeah. the the dragon is like is circling the castle with the the fire coming out of the nose, and you know." But again, that was again Tom Herman and those guys, Ed Warner, those guys got those guys coach up, and again, those are the ones that's where you earn your money. You know, you earn your stripes. Like, yeah. like coach, it, coach yeah. of Paris and Dewan is like, okay, PJ go out and erase that guy and Dewan, you erase that guy. And then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, well, I'm good coach. I'm a heck of a coach. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, you know, but that's just, it is what it is. Well, uh, any final thoughts? We'll wrap this thing up. Great episode today, Bank. Um, any final thoughts as we get into Indiana week? 
Yeah, the final thoughts would be Brandon Baker, who they need Brandon Baker. You know, the O-line group, mm-hmm. they, they, they've got committed. They have, you know, the, the three Ohio kids who may be really good. They may not be really – we don't know what they are. You know, they seem like projects to me. Ian Moore, I think, is really good, but it's, it's not enough. You know what I mean? If you would look at this group four, and if the Ohio State DBs were similarly ranked to these guys – you'd be really upset about it. If the D-line would be this type, you'd be really upset about it. So, you know, they need Brandon Baker really, really bad. He takes this group from average or a little above average to exceptional. Add Brandon Baker to Ian Moore, then you got the three projects and hope you hit on one of them, and that's a heck of a class. So Brandon Baker is someone I would keep an eye on. I think they're getting him too. Um, And then – Man, the McKinley kid, you know, you'd, you'd rob, you'd rob Dairy Marts to get that kid. Ooh. I mean, you'd do anything oh, yeah. to get that kid. But, I mean, yeah, wow. Perry, man. I mean, I mean, put, I, him, put him with Justin Scott and Edric Houston, and you got God. the best D-line recruited class ever. Those three. Uh, I don't care who you had after that. Yeah. Add anybody yeah. as a four. So, Brandon Baker, I think they're getting – if they shock the world and get Dominic McKinley, I mean, this is, this is an amazing recruiting class then. Yeah. I mean, one of the best ever in Ohio State history. Mm-hmm. So that's the two names I would keep an eye on. Final thoughts are Brandon Baker and Dominic McKinley. All right, that's going to give our uh, our fans some excitement tonight. So appreciate you, Bank, killing it as always. Bill, the Bank Green, bringing the heat on the show uh, per usual. Uh, if you guys love the Bank, he's on BuckeyesCoop.com. Crushing it with his material. Really excited. Uh, as he, get, he gets into game week, he puts out his previews. Uh, he does his game watch. Really great content. Love to have you guys on BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, appreciate you guys as always. If you enjoyed this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe and also click on that little alert bell. And you guys will get an alert every time we go live. We're going to be pushing a lot of these shows. We appreciate you guys tuning into them. If you need your best companion for Ohio State football, join BuckeyeScoop.com. We are growing like crazy and we appreciate all of our new members. Thank you guys for joining us along with our Scoop family that's been a part of us for a while. Uh, With that being said, as always, thank you, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Go Bucks.